Hi everybody, this is Chris with Invest LYH. I'm going to try something new on the channel today. Um, I'm going to try to watch a video and do a quick reaction to the video itself. So let's hope this works. I'm going to go ahead and try to share my screen now and see if we can watch this video that, here we go. Let's see here. All right, so I have a video up here about the increased pressure on Airbnb owners to sell as the supply outpaces demand. And it's using this guy who runs a company called ReVenture Consulting. So let's go ahead and take a take a quick watch. It's about a five minute video and I'm gonna stop it as I as I wanna put in my opinion on this. And just so you guys know, I have an economics background. I have a terminal degree in economics. I understand modeling. I understand uh, different aspects of uh, market-based economics. So it's not like it's just some random guy. I have several years of experience of looking at the transactional aspect of market-based economics, and that's where I'm coming from. So let's take a look here. Let's bring in our A-list panel to kick it off. Redfin, Chief Economist Daryl Fairweather, Reventure Consulting CEO Nick Jurley, and Crescent Capital Chief Investment Officer Jack Ablin. Jack, I'm going to start with you. You actually just randomly, we had already planned to do this. I get this note from you. We asked you to come on not that long ago. Thanks very much. Using your math and using rates and whatever, you think that the median price of a home should be over $100,000 less than it is right now. Yes, and it's a pretty simple math, Brian. All we're doing is we're taking median incomes, which we're calculating uh, at 77,000 roughly uh, per year. And again, that's been going up over the last couple of years. So we wanna take that into consideration. We're um, calculating a mortgage rate of about seven and a half percent. And then we assume that 25% of the income goes to a, a, a monthly mortgage payment. We kind of gross that up and then add another 20% for a down payment. We come up with $283,000. That's substantially below the 400, 400 plus thousand that you're showing on, on the screen. So um, I don't expect we're gonna see an immediate 31% crash. Wow. Uh, because like you said, those that are existing homeowners who have low mortgage rates are just gonna stay put. Yeah, and Daryl, I want to be clear. The okay, so two things on this. The guy mentioned that those who have existing mortgage rates below, let's say, um, favorable mortgage rates, right, below four or three percent, they're going to stay put. Which this eliminates the market for the move up buyer. And I did a video on this a couple, a couple, probably about a month ago, maybe two months ago, um, how it's eliminating the middle market. And this guy is absolutely correct on this. One aspect that I would disagree with him on is the pricing structure. Because what he's not taking into account is those one-time lump sums that people have, for example, when they sell their home. If you sell your home, let's say, in a hot market like Tampa, Tampa, Florida, and you move here to Lynchburg, you are going to have a large lump sum that you can either apply to a down payment or apply partially to a down payment. So let's say you're buying a your sell you sold your house in Tampa for six hundred thousand. You bought it originally for two hundred. You have a four hundred thousand um, dollar cushion. You could put two hundred thousand dollars down on a eight hundred thousand dollar home here, and that that's not going to be reflective in the income at the moment because you might put three hundred thousand dollars down to lower that payment so that it's going to be what your salary would be here if you had that. This is often a fallacy that happens when people do not have an understanding of the basics of income. Income is not just for hours worked. It is also selling goods and services that may not be directly related to work hours. So selling a home is considered income, just ask the IRS. Now we do have that provision that allows you to not have to pay taxes, but you, I, this is just a fallacy that oftentimes people who are on these types of shows, they say, okay, well, one thing's going in one direction, something has to go in a different direction. And that's always not, that's not always the case. 
So let's continue to watch. And I, I like this lady, Daryl. She's pretty good. I think she's the Redfin uh, chief economist. Come on. Median home price has come down off its peak of a couple of months ago. I think it was around 430 or 440. So the trend is down. You know, I want you to comment on what Jack just said, but also here's what's bonkers. Trend is down it doesn't nationally. Seem to matter. If you put a decent house for sale on the market, I talked to a lot of realtors. They sell in like three days. That's true. Yeah, I think what should be the right price is very different from what actually is the price right now. We have a real lack of supply, a lack of supply that has been going on that. for at least five years. But during the pandemic, it became extremely acute because people snatched up all the homes and now they don't want to sell anymore. About a third of homes for sale right now are new construction because there are so few existing homes on the market. And since new construction is doing a quite well. I need to pause here just to go back to my fundamentals that i have put on my channel supply and demand if the demand outpaces supply prices go up what happens is more producers will come into that sector which is why we have a third of new home of home sales being new builds excellent point by her right now at least you know amidst these high rates we can be, I can hope that there will be more inventory down the line, but for the time being, those prices are probably going to stay put high. Homeowners don't have a real reason to sell. No, and and in fact, they have they not only not have a reason to sell, Nick, they've got an active reason not to sell, which is yeah, maybe I'm sitting on a bunch of equity, I'll make a fortune, but unless I'm moving to like Equatorial Guinea, I'm going to have to buy a house somewhere else, and I'm going to end up paying seven percent. Do you see a crash coming? And, you know, that's a great point. This guy always sees a crash coming. Just FYI. Hey, Brian, a lot of people are locked in. However, here's the thing. There's 100 million single family homes in America. The inventory on the market's less than a million. So all we need actually in America to see inventory increase substantially is a little bit of distress in the housing market. And one area I'm seeing that distress right now is with investors. Lots of investors who bought during the pandemic, whether they be for long-term rentals or Airbnbs, their properties are sitting vacant right now, and the rent is going down as their cost of debt is going up. So a lot of these investors, like the homeowners, have said to themselves, oh, I don't need to sell just yet. But there's pressure building in the background of the housing market that I think will cause yeah. inventory to go up by quite a bit. Nick, Nick I want to go, I'm going to go back to you, Nick, because you're making a good point. And I've been reading a lot about these Airbnbs that are now... I just don't see it. Uh, he's talking about the investors who bought during the pandemic. Rates didn't go up during the pandemic. They went up after the pandemic. After inflation occurred, that's when the rates went up. So if you bought previous to when the rates went up, you have a low payment and rents increased. So you have that spread that you can you can eat into as things occur. Now, places like Austin, Texas, where taxes are go are reset every year and they're going crazy, it might happen. But how many people are moving to Austin, Texas? They're going to have no problem selling that home. Now, if the let's say um, Campbell County re redid their tax code where they reassessed every year based off of true market value, not because generally when you look at an assessed value from the city, it's much lower than what the actual true market value is, because if it was at the true market value, this, the city would have a revolt. They would get everybody who voted for that out of there, right? We would go to our, our councilman and say, why did you do this? Get out. We don't want you. We want somebody else in here who will give us a break on our taxes. So, but let's say Campbell County did that. Then all, and then people here would have a hard time selling their home. Because it's not Austin, Texas, where we don't have that influx of buyers where I think I read a stat like years ago, and this is years ago, right? Austin, Texas had 300 new people move there a day. We don't have 300 people move, new, move, new people moving to this area a day. So that's a little iffy. This guy, Nick, he he's worse than a than a clock. He's worse than a broken clock. You know, he at least a broken clock is right twice a day. This guy has been off since pre-pandemic he's been calling for a crash for years and in some cases if people listen to him they've they've robbed themselves of several 
hundred thousand dollars. I'm not a fan of this guy. Kind of being distressed sales. Can you explain a little bit more to the audience? Why would Airbnb homeowners be particularly, you know, people who buy specifically to rent it out, they're never going to live there. Why are they being hurt more now? It's a great question. It's, it's all a cash flow situation and a supply situation. So the aggregate Airbnb demand in America is actually still pretty strong. The problem is the supply of Airbnbs, specifically in certain markets like Phoenix and Austin and Tampa, has surged out of control. Again, this guy understands the fallacy for Airbnb, right? Where, okay, there's a lot of profits in Airbnb. So now producers are rushing to that area. And it's going to provide an oversupply. But if he says earlier that the pandemic, that if you bought during the pandemic, you're in trouble now, I, that just doesn't jive with me. You got in at a very low rate. Maybe today, when you're trying to do an Airbnb in Austin at an 8% rate, then you might have trouble being able to fill that vacancy. And I will say, uh, personally, I would never, um, I, I have looked at not necessarily Airbnbs, but vacation rentals before. And my rule of thumb on those is, will they cash flow as a long-term rental before we look at the short-term capabilities of it? And if they will not, then I will not purchase those. So, and we were looking this, earlier this year at uh, some beach rentals down in Florida. Um, but let's listen to what, what the rest of what he has to say here. Way more than the demand, which is now causing the revenues to go down substantially, particularly for mom and pop Airbnb owners who don't have access to all the fancy pricing tools that the big guys do. And so mm -hmm. I'm talking to Airbnb owners around America. They're saying their uh, listing is doing 40% less revenue this year compared to last year. And again, there's a million and a half Airbnbs in America some of them are doing fine, but others are really, yeah. really struggling, and that's going to put pressure on them to sell as they uh, as their revenue. Jack, to your, to your, what if you could? All right, so I'm going to stop sharing this, and I'm just going to go back to full screen here. All right, so yes, there's a million Airbnbs in America, but didn't we just talk about how there's like 120 million homes? So that's less than one percent. I just. That guy is not, in my opinion, he is not very thorough in his analysis. I just, I don't know what his background is, but I don't think it has. So in economics, we have this uh, study called econometrics. And what it does is we take statistical models and we apply variables to them so that we can measure the, the differences in the variables and see which ones have true impact on the outcome. And I don't think this guy has an understanding of what that means. I think that he is, yeah, let's not, let's not go into that. <laughs> but anyway, um, if you guys liked this video, right, I, I um, thought it'd be interesting to watch uh, a CNBC article on um, the housing market with a guy who just assumes that price is a mechanism um, another person who uh, understands that there are some economic fundamentals that are underneath the market that are playing into it, and a gentleman who I just think is uh, not a very good analyst. So, uh, and if you guys don't know, my day job is an analyst. So um, I I do a lot of modeling every once in a while, and I figure out. Okay, what is the trend line? Where are we going? So um, if you guys like this video, please let me know. I'm going to go ahead and stop it. I don't even know if the audio came through because sometimes they have those weird restrictions. But um, I do appreciate you guys watching. Thanks so much. Have a great day.